Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Wall Street Reporter's next super stock live stream for today, September 24th. Uh, we have two great companies for you today, including a returning favorite, actually, <laughs> what our most popular company in the last, um, yeah, I don't know, six months or so. Uh, imagine AR stock symbol IPNFF, IP on the CSE. Uh, Alan Paul Silverstein, he's with us right now. And following Alan, we're going to have Peak uh, FinTech Group, PKKFF, uh, Johnson Joseph. He's going to follow uh, Alan. Uh, we, might be a little, we might run a little bit late, so everybody, please be patient. Uh, so we have a lot of new people in the audience. So for anybody that's new to the live stream, you know, our goal with these live streams, the next Superstock live stream, is to bring you companies which we believe have 10x to 100x upside potential and we've had a number of winners including uh imagine ar uh which which had a huge run up in the last couple of months has come down so this is a little bit of a roller coaster ride but you know uh it's actually imagine as uh, one of our top performing stocks of uh 2020 uh had a 1700 percent increase uh since i believe it was in april or may uh it's come down now it's up so there's a lot of uh this is this is the type of show uh, for people who like a lot of uh, action and excitement. Uh, and we definitely, we're here to, to provide that. So th the companies that we're bringing you, they have three things in common. One, they're going after massive multi-billion dollar market opportunities. Two, they have multiple catalysts in place for creating that value for, for you know, and number three is they're at a key inflection point right now where they're about to, you know, have that explosive growth. Uh, so uh, the idea with the, with the program is that Alan is going to present. He's going to give his presentation for about 20 minutes, and then we're going to open up for a Q&A. And it's your questions that really, uh, you know, make these events special. So please, uh, you know, watch the presentation, ask your questions, and then decide for yourself if Imagine AR is going to be our next super stock with 100x because they've already exceeded the 10x. They've already had 17x. So now we want to see if this stock has you know, legs to go to 100X. Uh, with that said, uh, Alan, uh, take it away. Thank you very much, Jack, appreciate it. And uh, it's been a long time, Jack, has it? I think the last time I was on is, what, are we, what were we saying, eight weeks ago? Uh, it's, it's been eight weeks, so this is, this is an epic return. That's exactly the word that needed to be used because it's been eight weeks, a quiet summer from a public standpoint, but certainly not from behind the scenes as a company continue. I want to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. We're going to try and give you some real meat on the bones, explain a lot of the things that are going on with the company. It's a lot of new stuff going on. We'll give you some good info. We'll go through the Q&A and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll come out of there and believe that Imagine AR is back in action and ready to run. And uh, obviously like our first announcement today, I always really like to start with a little, a little music beginning. So yes, today we actually announced the five year NFL alumni deal. So I always like to do a little clip there just to give you a little music to go on. Oh, it clipped right too fast. There you go. I, we have to watch our copyright issue. For those of you who've been big NFL fans, this is a huge deal for Imagine AR. And we just signed it. It came from Gus Farratt, who joined us as an advisor. We were extremely excited, got introduced to Dean Dalton, uh, international director for the NFL alumni. And this is a five-year deal with the NFL alumni, with the first project being the new academy that they just launched. And it's beginning actually September 28th. And players are arriving this week to get started. And this is finally where we say we made the show. We made it to the big leagues. We, we've been seeding the market for quite a while. Everybody knows about a lot of deals. It's a grind. When you build a company from startup, you've got to start with the small ones, whether it's the local Erie teams, the Louisville Bats, and even the Arizona Rattlers. We started small, seed the market, test it out, see what the response is, keep building it. That's how you got to do it. And then by the time we got to speak to the NFL alumni decision makers, Dean being the key one, and if any of you saw, he did an interview with us uh, previously, which is available online, he actually stated that they looked at a number of different technologies, next gen they brought to the NFL, 
and they were looking for AR and we were the ones they selected on a five-year full revenue deal. So the revenue opportunities are significant. It's in the branding, the partnerships. Working with the NFL alumni, they've got 37 chapters across the United States. You've got every player who's played the game is a member of the NFL alumni, and we'll have the opportunity to work closely with them to build out interactive programs with sponsors, with branding. This is a major revenue deal for the companies we go forward, and we are going to launch their app and get it live prior to Christmas. We're moving very quickly already on it, and we expect it to be up and running before Thanksgiving. Going to the NFL Academy, the Academy, as discussed previously, again, Dean had mentioned, is the free agents who are NFL ready. They're bringing a number of NFL coaches to work with them. It will be in Canton, Ohio, right next door to the NFL Hall of Fame. It'll be a bubble. So all these players in, they're hand-selected, invited. People just can't show up. And then the way they're going to be monitored is there is actually video every day. They're going to make notes to all the coaches. And imagine they are for a small revenue opportunity as well. We already provided the system that's going to be used by the NFL Academy, the NFL Alumni Academy, and all the NFL coaches to access it. So we built that in less than a month. It's going live, and that'll handle all the videos, everything else. That makes us a real enterprise opportunity client now. We're going to the next level, not only with AR, but something that the NFL teams will be using to select the players from the academy. So this is a pretty significant one. We're excited. Uh, they did announce, which we put in our press release, there will be a docu-series filmed at the Academy, similar to a lot of those series you see that have been on Netflix and on Amazon. There will be a docu-series, which Imagine AR will be featured in it. So it's pretty exciting. And if you look behind me, you actually see the vinyl poster. There will be vinyl posters all around the stadium up to, I think, six or eight feet tall on the walls around the stadium. We will have our name on a number of them as well, as well as in the hotel room and around. So as they film, the Imagine AR will be there. We'll also be providing activations with AR with some of the players and the coaches. The second thing that we're very excited about with the Academy is they are gonna launch with Gus a major youth camp across the United States throughout all the chapters. So you have thousands and tens of thousands, if not more kids all across United States attending these NFL Alumni Academy camps run by NFLers. And in that case, the NFL app, the alumni app with us, will be providing AR activations with brands, with sponsors, targeting the youth market. It's a pretty big opportunity as well for revenue. So we're excited. This is a great one and it has great impact on the future of us. And will also give us the opportunity to go to the other leagues as well. Wave brought us this deal, and Wave, again, is owned by Dean Dalton and Brian Klassmeyer. They signed the quarter-million-dollar U.S. deal with us a couple of weeks ago, which we announced. What people don't realize is this is going to be a whole new app, but it is not going to be Wave. It is going to be something we're keeping quiet. We'll launch in November, but a significant new sports entertainment opportunity mobile app. So we're excited about that because that also not only has a quarter million guarantee, but also the revenue share deals on this. Slap it on, people have been wondering about, just give you an update. We work very closely. We talk all the time. That was a $300,000 deal. They are launching their app probably towards the end of October, mid to end of October. They're going live. Johnny Damon is one of the owners. He will be the first AR activation just to be included. So it's kind of cool that Johnny will go in on the green screen and you'll be able to play some similar to what we did with Flow Rider, but expect to be a quite a number of deals with them once they fully launch the website as well, starting November, and we'll be working very closely with them as we go forward. We just did the ECHLs, Alan, the, uh, they, we worked with them when we did the restaurant partnership with them. Uh, they followed the Louisville Bats and they wanted to help their community and restaurant partners during COVID-19. They were so happy with it. They selected us for the entire 2021 season as well. They are also working with us to get to other teams in the ECHL. And obviously they are with the Minnesota Wild too. A lot of you aware also, again, just summarizing, we've got the Pittsburgh deal. The University of Pittsburgh selected us. I believe it's the first MBA program in the United States, if not North America. They will be doing a full AR VR series, but it'll be focusing on our AR platform. 
and they'll also have a contest at the end of the uh, year for that specific curriculum, and they'll be working with ourselves and Gus. But to be selected by one of the top graduate business schools in the United States, it's quite, quite an honor, and again, we're very proud of it. This is something that everyone's been mentioning. I just want to say the imminent deal is still alive. There's a specific factor that does not involve us that has impacted that deal. So as great and as wonderful as the NFL deal is with the alumni, that is not the imminent deal. The imminent deal is still there. We speak regularly. And again, just to qualify, because I know a number of stockholders brought it up, the deal was announced primarily because there were so many individuals in a number of organizations aware of the deal. And we were told at the point we made the announcement, it was going to happen very quickly. We did not want certain people in those organizations to have inside knowledge of a deal. It wouldn't be fair to our shareholders who've been with us long term and even short term that someone know about the deal ahead of time. So the press release was done to level the playing field, to give knowledge. It was not done for the stock price. We didn't need to do it. We already raised the 4.5 million, which we announced only days later. But we did it just to ensure that everyone had the right amount of information and that other people who may not have been involved in stock didn't have any inside information that they can profit on and cause you know, further harm to our current shareholders. That is so alive. We're extremely optimistic too. And once it goes and it, we expect that it will happen, we will also state why it did and everyone will realize what happened. Our client field is starting to pack up a bit. Uh, we are very optimistic as we continue through the end of 2020, this is gonna fill up even more. Certainly we'll put the NFL alumni, and again, the Academy is the first project with the NFL Alumni Association. You will see more to come and they will all be in the NFL alumni mobile app. So we will create the mobile app and the Academy and the other organizations we go forward with the chapters, with all the athletes, will all be contained within that singular app as well. Just to remind people also, we are still a Microsoft Azure partner. We are a certified co-sell partner ready and have been since 2019. And that's important because we were recruited by Microsoft. The Microsoft HoloLens team brought us in and fast-tracked us. We did not apply on a portal and then claim to be a Microsoft partner. We were brought in, we were recruited, and we are currently also working with Microsoft in the GSIC overseas in Europe. And we're very excited about the opportunities we have with them. We do have our patent portfolio, which everyone is aware of. There are still two pending patent applications that we are working on. So we're hoping those also could be approved in the near term to really shore up this patent portfolio that we think has significant value as the AR market starts to take off. Everyone is aware we've added three new advisors, Chris Dill being you know, considered one of the top sports tech advisors in the United States and around the world, having him as a former Portland Trailblazer CIO for over 10 years. He is highly respected, knowledgeable, and when he gets involved with a company, he does a tremendous amount of due diligence before he puts his name on it. These quotes are great, but having Chris aboard is wonderful. Gus already is, has been phenomenal in short order. And Mike and his team, and I use that word team, it's not Mike himself, but we have a group in the UK up and running already fully and out marketing Imaginaire overseas. Just giving you an idea, this just came out in terms of the size of the mobile AR market. A number of you may have seen it. So we're sitting around 4 billion today. We're looking at a market to go into the mid 20s, 20 billion in four years. The growth is going to be astronomical. It's going to be fast. We are well positioned. We put the platform together. We're working on significant enhancements on our platform as we speak, which I'm going to explain to you. But this market is growing quick. Our pipeline is stuffed. It is still coming in on a weekly basis, new ones, as we continue to go out there. We believe the NFL uh, deal is certainly going to bring us a lot of new eyes, a lot of new significant revenue opportunities in the short term. We also started and kicked off our online direct marketing program already with our team. We started back in September. You'll start seeing some of the things show up as you start searching for augmented reality platform solutions, both in SEO, contact marketing. So we have a full team with a full budget up and running since September, and it's starting to make some significant progress. The views on our website have started to grow exponentially. 
Uh, organic searches have started to increase enormously. We're going to do some paid advertising. So with the funding we've gotten, we are now going to go full steam ahead and really getting the Imagine the R platform out in the market, known, and really pick up in the B2B space as well. A lot of you are familiar with Imagine AR Studio. These are simplistic, cartoonish ones. We have given this away for free. We have our own model design, but anyone right now can go to imagineARstudio.com, create free Halloween ones, create any ones you want. You can load your own images. They are limited versus our enterprise SaaS model or our SDK, which plugs into existing one. But this is up and running today for anyone to do. But again, you look at this simplistic graphic, it's fun. With the NFL, we're going to be doing very high-end graphic, holographs, player interactions, and tying it into brands and integration. When we look at sports, in particular, in stadiums and venues around the world, which continues to be our leading area, these are all the features and opportunities we can provide with our platform today. There is not another platform in the world that can do all this from a single platform immediately. We are the only one. And that's part of the reason not only the NFL alumni selected us, but we're getting called a lot both in Europe as well in the United States to start understanding how to leverage AR. Everyone's been waiting since early winter in the sports venue business because when COVID hit, everything shut down, they weren't sure what to do. Well, for them, they're getting into the fourth quarter, literally, and they've got to start doing something. They've got to engage fans. They've got to sell merchandise. They've lost enormous amounts of money by people not going in stadium. AR is a one-to-one -one relationship on a mobile phone that can drive revenue. We can drive sponsorship activation as well. And a lot of these organizations' venues are now facing make goods where companies, brands, major brands pay to be in stadium with signage and other promotions that don't exist. So they want make goods. And AR is a perfect tool for that. And that's why we're starting to see some enhanced requests all across the board in many different professional sports leagues in North America, as well as overseas. These are some of the updates. We, we went into full development as well starting this summer. We have a dedicated team to building all this. It's still most, a majority of our budget on our monthly burn rate is all on technology. So the new Imagine AR mobile app will be out next week. We added two new features, a reward card, which we use as a key call to action opportunity where it could be a coupon, it could be a redirect to a website, it could be an e-digital collectible card, will come right on the screen in the middle of the air activation, and you can take your hand on the phone and finger and open it up and immediately go to the website, or you can just toss it to the side on the screen. Nobody's ever done this before. It will be up and running next week. And the other big feature we felt was important is the AR snap the camera. Right now, you have to point your phone at a logo, at an image, watch it, and then if you move the phone, it doesn't continue, which is the standard in the AR world. We decided for user experience and ease of use, we're gonna take that image and snap it to the camera. So when you go and you point at a marker or you're at a location through your phone, you can walk away and keep that content up and running on your phone for you and share it if you need to. We're upgrading our cloud significantly. From over a year ago, year and a half ago, when we originally built it, we're doing a complete overhaul on cloud 2.0, which allows us a number of new things. As we expand globally, we can spin off new Azure instances. For example, if we did a white label overseas for an organization and they wanted to have it tied to their SDK, rather than rebuilding and copying code, we can spin off like a virtual setup cloud and drop it into any country. Major production opportunity for us in terms of efficiency, low cost and picking up these SDK speed opportunities much faster and driving revenue quicker. Again, nobody else has put this together. This is gonna come out this fall to winter. We also are going into GPDR compliance, which is key as everyone knows, if you're in the tech space, you must adhere to GPDR compliance for your mobile app. We will be fully compliant with it when we go into overseas as well. And this is part of doing the new cloud 2.0, the white label, which has become something significant. We're doing a white label for slap it on. That's the 50,000 a year US license. Same thing with the NFL alumni, same thing with the wave. Uh, and we expect this to continue is the ability to spin off new white labels quickly in a new parent child relationship in the cloud. So we built this all out. We're going to start rolling it out quickly. There is a major new feature we have built into 
the white label version that is going to be rolled out this November in a number of the white label apps. It is a high revenue driven opportunity for content. I don't want to announce it now for the number of the clients we're working with, but it's something that's going to be pretty exciting and we think it's going to drive the key of recurring revenue model in the AR space. The SDK is up and running in native mode. It's ready to go. We have it up and running for both GPS, location AR, as well as for visual. As you can see, for those who are technical, we did the iOS and CocoaPods. The Android is up and running with Package Maven. We are ready and we're out there marketing it. And we are very optimistic as we continue through 2020 to have a number of those SDKs up and running. We also, again, this just goes and shows you what we've done in the cloud for those who are interested from a technical standpoint, but really high performance, high efficiency and modularized it. So we can continue to build out the product as a global platform, whether it be in Africa, Asia, Middle East, or over in Europe, we can spin off the SDK instances pretty quick and it's important to have them only engage their specific content. They don't want to see anyone else's on SDK, a team, an organization, a retail store only wants their own. As you know, Mike Tunnicliffe joined our board and we came up with the dual screen activation opportunity. We are out marketing it as we speak and there's been some great interest in the market. It is part of our sales pipeline as well. So as you watch a concert, a sporting event online on a desktop or on a screen, utilizing the phone is point the phone and we call collecting Easter eggs. Point at a brand logo, get an AR activation, earn points, collect the points, use non-fungible tokens as well as collectibles and start building the reward of streaming viewership. The proof that you're there watching it and as you build it up, you can then utilize those rewards, those e-digital collectibles, which have all AR immersive experiences to then get new merchandise, exclusive offers, whether it be from a musical band or from sports or from different organizations. This is something we've gotten aggressive with with COVID-19 and it's generated a lot of interest. We began a marketing campaign about 60 days ago. We are talking to a number of streaming companies, music companies, sports organizations that are looking for a way when people are not gonna come to a facility specifically with COVID-19, how to engage them and then how to leverage the brand sponsorship, the merchandise opportunities to sell, as well as the activation. This is a great way off of your second screen to do it. And we're going full force into marketing out there. Why is AR starting to build up even more? You know, before COVID-19, it was a cool tech. We were way ahead of everyone else. We've spent three and a half years building this tech, this platform, but with COVID-19, it's become a must have. And we are talking to a lot of prospects now who approach us. They are educated on augmented reality. They understand it. They know the differences and they appreciate what we've done. And these highlights of getting your brand out, getting an SDK that can plug in, and instantly uh, social media integration built in, loyalty rewards engagement. As you're pointing your phone and you're getting AR activations, earning points into your loyalty program that you can then use later for merchandise or exclusive offers. So I kind of went a little fast in this, but I wanted to at least cover enough because I know there's a lot of questions. Uh, I know it's being recorded so you can come back and watch it. You know, when I look at Imagine AR, I hear and speak to a lot of stockholders. I thought this was very appropriate because you know we've, we've been up, we've been down, we've had quite the history, and I feel very confident as we continue through 2020, this is how we're gonna continue and drive this company, build value, and hopefully it's reflected in the stock. And she's building and going out there. And a lot of the people are sitting there doing their posts, the same posts that, you know, that people forward to me for two years, the same old story. You just got to achieve recurring revenue, build the product, keep seeding the market, making announcements, and continue to grow the business. And that's what our whole team is built on. That's what we're focused on. And we'll continue to do. And uh, we're very, very optimistic on 2020 and beyond. But I think the next couple of months coming in, uh, our shareholders, new investors will be extremely pleased and happy to see the results of all our hard work and the investment of our energy and the investment money to get the results we're going to get. So with that, I'll go back to you, Jack. Are you there? Yes. All right. Okay, we got a lot of thing for you, Jack. I, this is just for you. I know we have 330 of our favorite friends. A, 
I haven't been on in eight weeks and I want to come back next week. So I'll say I'll be back. I didn't use the word epic, but if I'm going to be on, I want to make sure it's it's important. So I do want to come back next week. We discussed doing a live stream with questions. Absolutely. Yeah, but definitely. I brought this up for you the last time. That's the perspective. Does that look familiar? So that's that the G. Yeah. Going wow. public prospectus that we had when we went public with the phone card. And whose company was on there? That's where you are. And also yeah. finding out, wasn't that Evan from Next Tech AR? He was there as well at that time, correct? <laughs> it, 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 the world, every, every, it's a small world. Wow. This, that, that was a, gr a, a hot stock. Although, actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, Imagine AR has done a lot better than... than, uh, than we can, that stock IPO'd at five. We made it to about 12. We had an acquisition offer come in along the way. Uh, this was an article from local paper when we actually IPO, which is pretty funny. Ignored the man with the large glasses, the mullet, and the mustache on the left. I don't know who he is, but uh, it was that's, quite a growth. <laughs> that's, no, that's, ah, that's so crazy. there you go. That that was for you with our friends, but that was back in the day when we did IPO. But yeah, the market then when we started, there were five of us. We were the first one to IPO, and the market I think grew to six billion dollars in three years. Imagine they are with augmented reality. The growth opportunities beyond this, I mean, so significant. No, it's, it's yeah, it's completely different. It's a um, you know massive opportunity. Yeah, so we're definitely gonna. Have, I, I think. Hopefully we can get through. Uh, we're, we're kind of tight on time, so we're gonna. And we have a lot of questions. I, so I went fast. I wanted to go as fast as possible. Yeah. So if we run out of time, we're gonna go to. Uh, we'll we'll go through next week. I'll start off actually with some of the live questions first, and then we're gonna go back to uh, the questions uh, that came in before. Okay. So okay. Uh, we got a great question here from Brad. He's asking, um, how many live demos do you do in an average per week? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trying to expand it, and I have taught a number of our advisors, but I know you're trying to get an idea of the sales funnel. I, two weeks ago, it's funny, I look at the calendar, and I literally had two. By the end of the week, I had 16. Last week, I usually end up somewhere on a weekly basis for myself, separate from the advisors. We have Neil Badesky, who's running sports. He does his own now, but I usually average somewhere between 10 to 20 per week. And now with the UK office up and running with a team of three people currently, uh, that is starting to expand as well as we continue. So yeah, it's probably 10 to 20 a week and it just keeps going. And a lot of it is due. What's nice to see though, is some of the past companies, sports teams that have called us have now showed up again saying, we're interested, let's discuss how we can leverage it. Yeah, I'm sure like the, the sales pipeline, you know, really got, you know, messed up in the last, uh, you know, five, six months, there's no question. Uh, so you all of a sudden there's, there might be an explosion of sales, I don't know, uh, in a month. Uh, so <clears throat> we got John asking another interesting question here. Uh, it appears at least half the population doesn't believe sports and politics should be in the same arena. And this is playing out with a dramatic drop in TV ratings. How valuable do you think this is? of an opportunity, do you think this is for IP and FF? Good question. Uh, that's a good question. And actually, I try and keep the company, and I, you know, back in the phone card days, we had it where, and we had, you know, I had a conversation where people would come and try and do certain things in the cards, and I try, as a public company, you have to be very careful where you state yourself, what you put out. Even though sports and the ratings are down, remember, they are huge, multi-billion dollar organizations, Fans will return, we will come out inside, and they need to engage their fans. They need to look for new tools, new ways. That's why we came out with the live streaming tool uh, a couple of months ago, and we're getting a phenomenal response right away from new market opportunities that probably prior to COVID, we wouldn't look at. We try and keep ourselves away from the politics and away from taking stands on other areas, but focus on the B2B business opportunities. And I think as we continue, whether it's the NFL alumni slap it on, B2B, then ultimately to the consumer. And I think you'll see the shift as we start building out Imagine AR Studio. When the Apple glasses hit and the LG E glasses hit and all these glasses hit, the Imagine AR Studio is positioned to be a publishing site. Anyone can publish and then consume it on the glasses. And then ultimately you get the licensed content and opportunities leveraging the Imagine AR Studio. So we're excited as it goes forward. We like to stay balanced in the business. But new vertical markets have approached us and we are aggressively pursuing those because again, we built a platform. Normally you do sports just from a business side to explain it. Sports brings you eyes and attention and brands and then the brands bring you the money. That's what happened previously when I did back in the day, the phone cards, 
that's pretty much the same thing here. You do the sports to get the attention, get the market. This NFL alumni announcement this morning, the pickup we got back, the reports uh, from the PR firm, was 200% more than every other article or press release we did in the last 60 days, just because it had the NFL in the name. Okay. Uh, we got a great question from Peter here asking, uh, what kind of competitive leverage do the patents have? Will they allow Imagine to force a place in the market? So when you look at patents, there's a couple of pieces to it. They're great assets. Obviously, we acquired the patent portfolio. There's some valuable IP in there. And I think, you know, as we continue to go forward, we're going to file some additional patents is our expectation. It uniquely positions you competitively out there as we continue to grow. And there starts to be a market. I mean, we're going from four to 48 billion in four years. There's going to be a lot of companies jumping in. You're going to use it to carve out your area of niche. And it certainly will provide a competitive advantage in sales when you're out selling to big companies and showing the port, the patent portfolio you have out there. I think it's still early when you look at, you know, the potential litigation opportunities because the market is growing so quickly. You always have to hit the timing because once you decide you want to pursue that, you've got to go full in. And by the way, when you do enforcement or push on the patents, I don't know if everyone's aware who's listening, just third party companies that actually fund the legal process. So it's not something that would come out of, for example, imagine if we decide to enforce one or two of our patents with a very large entity, there are actually third party organizations that'll finance it, after reviewing it, and then high handle the whole thing for you. Yeah, it's a huge, huge business. They uh, use it. Okay, so Vincent is asking, uh, what is Mike's uh, target audience overseas? Is it sports teams only? So Mike came from media. He ran The Sun and The News, which are pretty big publications. Uh, I will say Mike is big. When you look at the UK market, we speak at least two times a week. We have team meetings. Sports, obviously it's a given, but really going into the events because they're starting to look towards next year already, some of the large entities he works with. They're looking at retail malls and they're looking at other interactive opportunities that are not limited to sports. I can't say anything any further, but we have begun doing demos and projects as we speak. And we're pretty optimistic as we continue in 2020, you'll see some news coming out from over the sea, overseas. Okay, um, Mark is asking, what is the actual revenue of the deal? I guess he's asking about the NFL. Well, again, it was that deal, every other one we announced wave, that was a quarter million plus 50-50 revenue, slap it on 300,000. The NFL partnership, we felt in that case, the upside for that was significant with brands and sponsors. I mean, look at the NFL brands I work with. So in the alumni, you know, they have a lot of revenue. You can look it up. I don't have it offhand. I know people did spend some time looking what money they generate on an annualized basis, but the opportunity to be partners on the youth camp, uh, the academy, which will be, you know, in, in all the films, all the video, all the advertising promotion and sponsorship opportunities as they get potential free agents who they'll go back to the NFL and have specific deal opportunities for us to be in sales of merchandise, the sales of specific brand opportunities. So it is significant. I can't sit here and say what it's going to be, but the NFL alumni is doing this as a revenue opportunity. They're not doing this just to do something nice. They joined with us for five years because they want to make this a major channel of revenue for all the chapters besides the Academy and with the youth camp, which is going to serve as tens of thousands of, of young football players across the United States on an analyzed basis. They're expecting this to build up to something significant. Don't want to give any revenue guidance, but that's that's the best I can answer that at this point, Jack. Okay, uh, we got a couple of questions uh, asking about what's happening with the, uh, your uh, announcement with the Loop Insights. So Loop and I have spoken a number of times. Rob, he's been aggressive out there. We've actually developed a joint collateral piece. Our sales teams have been talking to his sales teams because we do have a number of people in sales and we are working together of integrating the AR activation sales pitch with the new collateral and targeting customers. So hey, Rob and I are actually re-engaging again. Uh, we talk you know, pretty regularly again next week and we are targeting. So yes, there's division one college opportunities, the professional sports opportunities, venue. I think he's got great technology. He loves AR, his team loves AR. We love what they're doing. So again, that's a partnership that's going to continue. We're working together. And like I said, we did create a joint collateral piece already. And that's rolling out as we go forward in September into October. 
Okay, uh, let me jump into some of the questions that came in earlier. Um, Matthias, if I'm pronouncing it, is asking, uh, are there plans to use AR in healthcare, for example? We have been approached by a number of companies in healthcare. So you're looking at package activation, obviously is a simplistic one, point the phone, get an activation, delivery of a reward card could be a coupon. There's education is another area where what you should do on dosages, usage of pharma, and then also obviously retail promotions at point of sale to get activations and gamification. The key with AR is gamification to interact and engage consumers to drive a purchase. And that's what we're focused on. And that's the requests that are coming in. Just putting out digital advertisements on social media, they're not creating the sales, they're not generating the call to action. How are you gonna get people back into locations to purchase items like healthcare, whether it be aspirin or other pharmaceutical opportunities, gamification using AR off of the phone and be able to deliver new activation content instantly anywhere in the world. You have the ability to do the campaigns with us that start and end on dates, but we just add, I added to it the time. So you can do campaigns based on minutes, hours, and days. So you can set up a whole schedule a month or two in advance and just let it auto run and create your AR activations as you continue to work. Okay. Uh, Alan, I got about, about 80 questions here, so I think we're going to have time for a few more. Then we'll, we'll probably do like a live chat next week. We'll probably spend the next we'll spend 90 minutes next week. But, okay, <laughs> so uh, Felix is asking, uh, Snapchat has really improved on, they, on their AR capabilities. How does your product compare? Two different products, Snapchat, younger demographic, focused on looking at your face, looking at people at themselves initially for face filters. Also, they have thousands and thousands of filters. We love what Snapchat's doing. It's educating the markets on AR. They don't do an SDK that plugs into an existing app to allow people to drive revenue and, and engagement and community into an existing app of a mobile company, which is key. They don't do the scavenger hunt type of capability that in an hour you can create your own scavenger hunt, your own interaction and engagement in the field, visual markers again instantly. But they have done some great stuff. There is not a competitive situation. You got to remember, the market is at $4 billion going to $48 billion. I tell this to stockholders. I would love to have us grow from four to $48 billion, but there better be a lot of companies doing some great stuff in AR to build out the market. You know, it's the same logic I tell people when you look at towns with car dealerships. Why are all the car dealerships right next door to each other? Because if you don't buy from one, you buy from the next, but they're all competitors because it increases the sales of all. We need to educate the market, build the market, get AR out there. There's proven studies that AR provides 30, 40% higher engagement than regular digital advertising. So I think what they're doing is great. I love what they're doing. We allow companies to white label. They don't. We allow people to drive an SDK to their mobile app. They don't. We allow them to use their own content, MP4, JPEGs, PNGs, OBJs, FBX, any type. AR portals are coming too. We provide all that. Uh, Alan, I, I would actually want to jump in with, with a question I have. Uh, are you getting any more traction with uh, some of the malls, large retails, like in terms of getting like right because like right now there was you know back in the summer they were like opening opening now that they're opened and you know the traffic is down some places are like you know they're pretty much dead are they is this something where now they feel pressure or now oh, they have a lot of pressure for fourth quarter they have a lot of pressure for rent they have pressure because the driver of you know what i've learned recently is santa claus and pictures with santa claus were a big driver for the holidays and with COVID 19 there's no santa claus pictures so why can't I do find Santa Claus in the mall with an AR scavenger on, find his reindeer, take a picture with Santa virtually with our AR, similar to what we did with Flow Rider. So that has become something that certainly, Jack, that's a good point, as something that has come up in the last couple of months, because as the fourth quarter comes and the pressure to get people in store, immersive experiences, AR has come to the top as a simple thing as doing Christmas picture with Santa, who knew? That that's such a driver of traffic into these stores. Um, we've got two questions that are kind of almost the same here. Justin and Eva are asking, uh, what are the top three applications for uh, for the uh, AR platform in the next three to five years, and where do you see Imagine AR in three to five years? Well, <laughs> you know, it's a grind from three years to now. It'll continue to be a grind. I believe you're gonna see Imagine they are start building out the SDK globally, that we're gonna really grow that audience significantly. We're gonna support all platforms. I believe the tipping point will be the glasses, 
whether it's the AR glasses, the LG glasses, the Unreal glasses, I think you're going to see that come out as the next key area because nobody wants to keep pointing their phone as they walk around. So if I can drive it off the glasses, off the phone, and Imagineer can handle that, and we can give businesses the tool set today with patents to drive both Apple and Android. And that's something to remember. Everyone's like, Apple glasses, Apple glasses. But you remember, you've got in Europe, Android has a huge population over there. So you've got to have the ability to support both platforms when we do. So I think we're well positioned. We've built a lot of this platform already. We've gone native in areas for high performance. We've done a lot of upgrades. We understand AR. We see where it's going. So I believe as we continue to grow, we have a, a number of strategic plans going forward. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't want to give any further guidance to that. But I do believe glasses will be the big tipping point. But remember, there's 5.1 billion mobile phones today in the market. That's a big addressable market. So even when glasses come, it'll take a long time to get it rolling. It's not going to happen instantly. You'll probably get your hipsters in Brooklyn and your guys in San Francisco who haven't moved out of San Francisco so far who are going to use the glasses. But most of the world is going to be on the mobile phones. And we can deliver today instantly on any phone model. Uh, okay, I got Vincent asking, uh, I guess related to that retail question, are you getting any more traction with casinos? Like, you know, same so guess. Engaged Nation has brought us to a number of casinos. They were going to have a big seminar with an organization. We were going to be a major part of it. The organization put it on hold. The casinos are facing a major COVID-19 challenge, and most of the executive teams that are in the casinos are now on the floors because their number one thing is monitoring the guests who come in, the players, ensure everyone is safe. Uh, but yes, there is some movement that's beginning now for casinos, targeting again the fourth quarter opportunities. That's why, Jack, as I mentioned previously in one of your other uh, webcasts with us, is that the fourth quarter for Imagine AR, we're extremely optimistic as we go forward. Okay, excellent. So we got time, I think, for a few more questions. Um, one of them is, uh, Kenneth is asking, I've got a couple of people asking a similar question, which I think you touched on, is why do you go so long without updates and exciting news, wins or potential wins posted in the news? So, you know, I, I always took the approach, we're not a stock promoter. We're not going to sit here and put out two to three releases a week. Many companies do that. I get the updates. To me, it has to be significant. It has to be material. And what's funny is, you know, that's the mixed bag, right? If we put out an announcement, for example, the Louisville bats, you know, the feedback from stockholders is, oh, that's a small deal. Why'd you bother putting it out? You know, we only want to hear big deals. Then you have you put out other ones like the NFL alumni, like, well, how big is it? You know, what is it? We will put out material news. We will now, and I expect going from now to the end of 2020 to be more regular with it as the deal pipeline and the flow continues to grow and we have the success that we expect. But through the summer, it was very quiet. We were repositioning ourselves. We ended up in new verticals. The live stream product that we rolled out two months ago, we wanted to go out there, get it started, see what the market opportunity is. We announced today that we've been doing it. I think we actually mentioned it previously as well. So I think the news flow will increase as we continue forward now through the end of the year and into 2021. But with COVID-19 hitting, just remember, we were in the sports and event marketplace and COVID-19 hit. Well, there went the sports and the event marketplace. And the initial uh, impact on the executives were, wait, let's see what to do. We don't know what we're doing. And everyone got on hold. There were a lot of layoffs in sports, a lot of layoffs in the event world. A lot of people's lives were very negatively impacted. They weren't looking to make the decisions that they are now back then. So it did slow down and change our market and allowed us reposition to areas we weren't thinking before and then expanding into Europe as well. So appreciate it. You know, in August is a very dead time. We were very quiet. It has been eight weeks, but I think I've already committed. I said we're going to come back next Wednesday. So we will be regulars on Wall Street Reporter to, through the end of the year and into 2021. Excellent. So we got, we got uh, two more questions, and then we're going we're, we're gonna to wrap up. We're going to come back next week to answer everything. we got like 100 questions here now. Well, uh, we might have updates as well. You don't know. You never know. Uh, so Mike is asking, would IP software, you know, would IP software work with the upcoming glasses technology, or I guess how we already we answered that. Yes, it's a matter of we already do it. We support it in the new SDK. We went native mode for Apple, so yes, we can support that as that comes out, gets spec'd out, and goes. Yes, very aware of it. Absolutely support it. 
Okay, Carlos is asking, with the money in the bank, what kind of R&D are you doing to improve the SDK? Well, the SDK, I don't want to give out some of the things we're doing, but like I said, we've already gone native with it. We built it. We're rolling it out. You can see some, you know, we're optimistic. You'll see some successes with it, but we're going to cloud 2.0, which we think is a significant enhancement, which we just mentioned previously in today's presentation, to allow us to spin off instances in Azure anywhere in the world in a very short period of time, which is key with an SDK. When you use Imagineer, the mobile app, you get everyone's content in it, right? It's a shared, singular platform, multi-tenant. So if I had customer A in California, one in New York, and they're putting out different things on different markers, everyone could see it. When it's an SDK, you get your own Azure instance, therefore you're only seeing your own content. And when I have my mobile app and I'm a sports team, I don't want, if I'm the Yankees, I don't want to see you know, the Rangers or the Reds, I want to see mine. Or if I'm a sports team in the football, I want the Giants, I don't want to see the Jets. That's what the SDK does with the new Cloud 2.0 also, is we can spin off an instance per team tied to SDK. They have an unlimited amount of opportunity to run their own scavenger hunts, their own AR activations, their coupons, everything else they want to do within their own environment without mixing other competitors or other teams. Okay, last question here is a good question from Damien. He's asking, uh, what major milestone should Imagine AR reach to move the stock over the $1 bar? What would be the anticipated timeline? CEOs are never, ever allowed to mention, discuss stock prices. If we you know, get our revenue together, we're recurring revenue, we're growing, the names are coming, the brands are coming, we're getting identified the market and we're building it out, always takes care of itself in the market. You got to drive revenue. You got to close deals. You got to build recurring revenue. And that's what we're focused on every day. It's been a grind. Everyone thinks, oh, they're sitting there quiet. You know, the amount of demos we're certainly from the beginning of the year, we love a higher close rate. I think we're close to four to 500 at this point. That's a lot. But at the same time, we've educated the market, which you have to, but some of them are coming back. I think our close ratio will happen sooner because of the COVID-19 issues now. Everyone's figured out how they're gonna go forward to do something, how to do make goods in sports. Events are going virtual. Now they're looking for how do I have people pay attention to live stream. So we're going into new areas. We look at building the business, closing deals, driving revenue. We've got great advisors. Chris still just started. You know, He's got a huge network of relationships he's bringing to the table. The NFL alumni, significant. So I think revenue will drive it, but we will stay a pure play AR company. We're not gonna go out there and acquire a widget sales company and just get revenue. We're not gonna go out and just get something that may not be synergistic. If there are opportunities though to acquire companies that are in the same industry, doing some cool things that we are looking for, then no, we're not opposed to going in and acquiring as well with the money in the bank, but we're spending it very wisely. We're focusing on building out the tech even further. We're looking at the patent area, the live streaming, non-fungible token integration, which is blockchain, and a number of new things that I don't want to discuss at this point that will be announced before the end of the year. Uh, yeah, no, definitely with the stock, where, you know, the stock where it is, the cash, you, do, you, you definitely have currency to make uh, acquisitions. Uh, Alan, I just maybe if you can clarify one thing in case people don't understand, did you explain like what make goods are, like what how that works in you know media? Okay, how that yeah, so quickly, I think just to get on me. Good question. So if I'm a brand, pick a beverage, you know, whatever, Pepsi, Coke, and I pay to be in a stadium. So I'll pay X amount of millions of dollars to be in that stadium. That's signage. That's I'm on the plastic cups they give out I'm in the program. And those deals are enormous. Those are enormous deals, all based on fans sitting in stands. They call butts and seats. If the butts don't come, then what do you do? So all the money's been paid to the teams for these coming seasons. There's no more fans coming in. So those metrics are gone. So the brands come back to the teams and say, I paid you all this money. I'm not getting my results, renegotiate. And teams, one team uh, executive I spoke to had the best line. He said, uh, I don't give money back. I'm not a non-for-profit. So what they do is it's called make goods. What can I give you in exchange for not having signage in my facility, my venue, that 50,000 people or 80,000 people are seeing every Sunday? What marketing program can I give you to expose your brand, activation, fans, engagement? 
that's where AR fits in really nicely because it gets people while they're at home watching the game, they can get them at sponsorship locations. For example, say it's a restaurant train, they could do restaurant activations where they are. And then if they're like at football, allowing minimal fit, amount of fans and stay in, they'll do it. But the focus is really outside bowl, as I call it, outside venue. So that's what the make goods is. I paid to be in the stands. You don't have anyone in the stands. You need to make it up to me. And the teams are not going to give the money. Yeah, they're no, always so, going to do a make good. Yeah, so basically there is, you know, they, essentially they have to, you know, because they didn't meet the metrics of, you know, they didn't deliver. So now that you know, part, it's in the contract that you know, if they don't oh, make yeah. anything, they got to make good with whatever, you know, whatever, however the deal is. So I think this is actually, this represents a real pent up. Oh, absolutely. It is more than people it's, could. Use the word imagine. It's more than yeah. people can imagine. It is significant right yeah, now. I mean, because it, it, an AR type of, you know, uh, engagement thing it would, it, is something that's unique. And, you know, somebody would say, okay, we'll, 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 we'll do that. You know, that's something that which, which uh, would, it's actually, it's, a, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, the, you have this, this, this real, you know, sort of pipeline of potential, you know, massive opportunities from this make good. All right. So Alan, so thank you again for, or it's great to have you back after, you know. Absolutely. Two, uh, Absolutely. For, for, for this, for the epic uh, presentation here, <laughs> uh, we're going to have you back in uh, next week. Uh, next Wednesday, I'm back for a live stream. To go through all the questions and um, and hopefully we'll have some more news by then. We might. Thank, thank you, you very much. Now. I thank everyone. Uh, I thank, uh, I'll wish one stock all to Bruce. Happy birthday. He made sure he wanted to do it. Hubert, long and strong in the Discord group. Thank you guys. And uh, there's a guy, Paul's Pick, who's out there running around. There's a lot of great supporters. I appreciate it, Imagine AR. And I think we're, we're ready to take the train ride to success. And I'm thankful everyone's joining us for this. Thank you again, Paul. You're welcome. Take care.